flat. You know, he normally runs a little bit better, but uh, this quick pace is going to hurt him. Fisher, nice move, but not able to convert. Beautiful look away pass. six minutes than we saw all of game one. Steve, I go back to your comment about Shaq looking flat and tired. Balderdash is all I can say. Oh, new word. <laughs> Steve, do you see what you missed? <laughs> Shot clock at five. Martin was able to recover. Just did get it off. Van Horn. Nets to win. Everybody's got to play well. Kittles is doing his job. Kid McCullough, okay. But Martin and Van Horn, the forward, struggling mightily. You have to have great forward play to be able to compete against Shaquille O'Neal. Well, you, you find out that Kobe is willing to come back and help out defensively, slap that away, and then you'll want Shaquille. Now, he's all lathered up, but, you know, <laughs> he's starting to breathe a little bit heavier now, Phil. Balderdash. <laughs> the NBA on NBC is brought to you by Polo.com. Shop the world of Ralph Lauren just a click away. By Miller Lite. Life is best told in a place called Miller Time. By Adidas Forever Sport. By Discover Card. It pays to discover. And by NBA Finals 2002. Love it live. Back at Staples, Marv Albert, Bill Walton, Steve, Snapper Jones. And these aerial photos, courtesy of the Goodyear blimp. It's Eagle, based in Carson, California. Goodyear built its first blimp back in 1925 and currently operates three airships. A moment ago, Robert Ory, vying for a rebound, was pulled down by uh, Keith Van Horn and was looked to be shaken up. Although Robert remaining on the floor for more on that, let's go to Jim Gregg. All right, thanks, Marv. He suffered a hip flexor and a pulled right hamstring. Ask Gary Vitti about it. He said, if you ever watch Robert play, everything hurts. Now this does as well, and he'll continue. Marv? Trainer complaining about his player? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I can't believe that from Gary Vitti. I mean, this guy, Gary Vitti, has so much credibility and, and, and such a great bond with his players. On oh, the left-hand attempt by Bryant. I think that uh, Gary Vitti was saying it in a positive way. Kobe Bryant able to spin his way, and the Lakers now lead 17-9. As a defensive player, Todd McCullough, who, who will never be confused with Bill Russell, he has to keep his body in front of Kobe Bryant, no matter what moves he brings. Jason Kidd with his second shot attempt. Richard Jefferson, the rookie from Arizona, has checked in for the first time, replacing Keith Van Horn. First quarter at the defensive end, the Nets have the same attitude that they had, and they're letting the ball move too freely. Fox turned back by McCullough. Here's Kittle, set up by Kidd. McCullough. Kidd on the rebound is fouled by Fisher. Now, the only net that can make a shot is Kerry Kittle, who's now three for seven. And uh, with a couple more misses, the rest of the team is 0 for nine. So, offensively, they got to get some people in the game to make some shots. You don't scare the Lakers if you can't score against them. Phil Jackson cannot be happy. New Jersey already has six offensive rebounds. And that's a foul there, capitalizing. Jefferson hit from behind by Ori, so that is the fourth team foul given by the Lakers. The good ball move from the perimeter, Richard Jefferson, who did not assert himself on the offensive end, only taking four shots there. He gave that foul to Shaq. Apparently they changed the call. It is Shaquille picking up his first. Richard Jefferson came into the league, noted for his defensive play. Uh, has shown that he's uh, quite an all-around performer. He can do it. Vince. 
Yeah, he's one of the energizers for the team, and he's got to come in and play well at both ends. He's got to rebound it, he's got to defend it, and he's got to score the ball in all areas as they try to pick up defensively. Some pressure shown by the Nets. The Lakers now lead by six. O'Neal is fouled. You saw Martin come over. Trying to help McCullough. What ball movement by Los Angeles. Bringing up the middle of the floor. They realize that McCullough is up on the high side. So they kick it to the wings. And then they're just too late because Shaq is so good at positioning himself. The way he keeps his shoulders and elbows up broad. Always presenting a target. Todd McCullough has to sit it out in early foul trouble. Now can the bench guys come in and make a contribution? Now Shaquille O'Neal 12 for 21 from the line. And game one but only eight of 16 in the fourth quarter he's now at 64 percent from the line in the postseason let's check in with lewis johnson lewis hey marv i talked to both todd mccullough and jason collins about defending Shaq in game one and their adjustments for game two and they told me they watched about 20 minutes of the video from game one and both agreed on two things number one too often they gave up that position in the paint on Shaq and he burned it but number two there's a problem with Shaq's listed weight. When I asked McCullough if Shaq is 335 pounds, quiet Todd McCullough broke out in a loud laugh and said, there must have been something wrong with the scale. <laughs> There's a problem with the listing of the <laughs> Yeah, they, right. they, they think he's hovering about 380 yeah. or 385. Meanwhile, the Nets are only three of 17 from the field in this first quarter foul. Jefferson with just under four minutes remaining in the quarter. Now Lucius Harris checks in for the first time. Kittles has gone cold and uh, Scott is looking for some firepower and Kittles has got to get that ball over the rim. All of his shots are flat. That's, that's over the foul of it. Rick Fox to the line. You can log on to NBCSports.com to email your questions on tonight's game. Bill Walton, Steve Snapper Jones view their answers on a web exclusive post game video report and check out an in depth preview of game three from former NBA coach, former colleague here at NBC, Matt Dukas. It's all on NBCSports.com. So the Lakers now lead 21 11. The Nets' offense has disappeared. They have missed 11 shots in a row here. Kerry Kittle's the only guy who can score from the field is on the bench. The forwards have got to come alive for Byron Scott. Please make a shot. Well, the Nets came out so shaky in game one. Harris oh, it's put down by Kenyon Martin. And although the Nets have not shot well again here in the first quarter, they do not look to have the jitters as they did in that first game. O'Neal played down by Eric Williams. And back comes Kidd, bothered by Ori. You know, Kidd has not been in full sprint when he's got the ball and really pushed it the other way, and they need that effort. here's Kidd off the steal. Bryant that deflection and extends to a 10-point Laker lead. Because Kobe is in full front. He is really aggressive all over at both ends of the floor. Uh, so they've got to challenge him, and that's Jason Kidd. Yes, Kobe uh, looking better than he did in the first game of the series. He came out with a twisted right ankle. I don't know if that affected the shooting the other night, but uh, he is looking better thus far here. Jamie Martin forcing up the three, but kept alive by the Nets. Another offensive rebound. Phil Jackson, he's going to start pulling his hair out. I think he feels pretty good. They've got control of the game. They've got the net struggling to find ways 